Yes, thank you very much. Thanks to the organizer for inviting me to what promised to be a very inspiring conference uh, here in Dublin at Trinity College. Um, I'm very honored to be part of this uh, conference and I'm pleased to be with you in the next days. As my talk is the first one uh, in this conference, and given that I've written an introductory book on biopolitics, um, I assume that the conference organizers assigned the duty or the task to me to give a brief and uh, precise overview on the notion of biopolitics, <coughs> and especially Foucault's notion of biopolitics, and some central lines of reception deriving from it, pointing to problems as well as perspectives of an analytics of biopolitics. Um, I'm quite happy with this assignment, and my hope is that my talk will serve as a good basis for the debates and discussions in the next three days. The talk consists of two parts. The first one will be mostly reconstructive, uh, drawing on arguments developed in my, books, in my book on biopolitics and elsewhere, and the second part, in the second part, I will try out some newer ideas based on points that are raised in recent publications. I will proceed as follows. Um, I will start with a brief presentation of Foucault's concept of biopolitics and will then distinguish between two important lines of reception emerging from it. The first line has its home in philosophy, sociology, and both social and political theory and is oriented toward the question of the mode of politics. How does biopolitics function and what counterforces does it mobilize? How it is different analytically and historically from other epochs and political forms. The second line has its starting point in science and technology studies, medical sociology, and the history of science, cultural anthropology, feminist uh, theory, and gender studies. Its focus is on the matter of life. How have the representation and the intervention in life forms been altered by new technological options and the conception of living bodies as texts that can be read and re rewritten. Um, this won't be a very elaborate PowerPoint presentation. I will uh, only um, give you the opportunity to follow some lengthy uh, quotations So uh, when I read them out, so that it's easier to follow for you. I would suggest in the second part um, that it is possible to tie the, the two research perspectives more closely together and to re-articulate them within an analytics of government. I will try to show that such a theoretical perspective is informed by elements in Foucault's writings, but it was never systematically developed by him. It necessitates going beyond the, the original framing of biopolitics in Foucault and aims at the systematic linkage and the theoretical reconsideration of the concepts of biopolitics and governmentality. As I said in the first part, the first part of my talk will be mainly reconstructive and the theories I will review, as well as many of the arguments will be familiar to many of you, especially those who have read my book on biopolitics. However, the reconstructive part is necessary since the second part of my presentation is based on it and it's also my hope that will serve as a good basis for further discussions in this conference. One more thing before, before I start. I originally planned uh, in this talk to explore in greater detail promising areas of research that have so far received little attention in work on biopolitics. And I wanted to focus especially on two of them. First, the so-called new materialism that shifts the accent from life to vibrant matter, to use the concept coined by uh, Jane Bennett. And secondly, the work on bioeconomy or biocapital that investigates the systematic relations between neoliberalism or contemporary capitalism on the one hand and changing concepts of life, systematic links between vitality and value, new relations between production and reproduction, and the emergence of a biotech industry on the other. Both are important debates for a rethinking of the notion of biopolitics since they address the two questions that the notion encapsulates. What is the matter of life and what is the meaning of politics? Broadly, I uh, wanted to review a theoretical movement that leaves from biopolitics to bioeconomics and from biopower to what Bennett has termed think power. However, I have not yet managed to develop this argument substantially enough 
And one of the reasons for this is that I have come to realize that they do not fit easily into the general argument linking biopolitics and governmentality. They therefore need to be the subject of a separate talk. As a consequence, I will only briefly deal with the new materialism in the later part of my presentation by arguing for, for an analytics of government that shifts and modifies the notion of biopolitics. So let me start with the first part and with the observation that the concept of biopolitics has had a remarkable career. While until recently only a small number of specialists were familiar with it, it is now used in many different disciplines and discourses. And this conference assembling scholars from a variety of disciplines and from very heterogeneous disciplinary backgrounds and theoretical interests documents this fact, this fact pretty well. While the concept has become a buzzword recently, it is, not the, it is not so well known that the term has a very long history. It already surfaces in the beginning of the 20th century, initially in organistic concepts of the state and later in Nazi texts in which the regulation of life and race took a prominent role. In the 1960s, a new research field called biopolitics emerged in Anglo-American political science its basic tenet being that, polit that political action rests on biological laws that consequently need to be taken into account by political scientists and by social scientists. For this approach, the analysis of political structures and processes demands application of knowledge from the behavioral sciences, social biology, and evolutionary theory. In the face of this naturalism, Michel Foucault proposed a relational and historical concept of biopolitics. In his work, the term in fact denotes an explicit break with the effort to derive political processes and, st and structures from biological determinants. Instead of presuming originary and timeless laws, he diagnoses a historical caesura, a discontinuity of political praxis. In this respect, biopolitics signifies a specific modern form of the exercise of power. Historically and analytically, Foucault distinguished between two dimensions of this life-oriented power. On the one hand, the disciplining of the individual body. On the other hand, regulation of the population. Biopolitics in Foucault's work signals a break in the order of politics I quote, the entry of phenomena peculiar to the life of the human species into the order of knowledge and power, into the sphere of political techniques, end of quote. Foucault's concept of biopolitics assumes the dissociation and abstraction of life from its concrete physical bearers. The objects of biopolitics are not singular human beings with the biological features measured and aggregated Oh, excuse me, the object of biopolitics are singular, are not singular human beings, but their biological features measured and aggregated on the level of populations. The procedure makes it possible to define norms, establish standards and determine, it, and determine average values. As a result, life has become an independent, objective and measurable factor as well as a collective reality that can be epistemologically and practically separated from concrete living beings and the singularity of individual experience. Foucault's concept of biopolitics orients itself not, against, not only against the idea of processes of life as the foundation of politics, it also maintains a critical distance from theories that view life as the object of politics. According to Foucault, biopolitics does not supplement traditional political competences and structures through new domains and uh, competences. It does not produce an extension of politics to include environmental policies or biotechnological issues. Rather, it transforms its core in that it reformulates concept of political sovereignty and subjugates them to new forms of political knowledge. Biopolitics stands for a constellation in which the modern human and natural sciences and the normative concepts that emerge from them structure political action and determine its goals. For this reason, 
Biopolitics for Foucault has nothing to do with the ecological crisis or an increasing sensibility for environmental issues, nor could it be reduced to the development of new biological biotechnologies. Rather, biopolitics stands for a fundamental transformation in the order of politics. Now, this lengthy quote that probably all of you uh, know. For the first time in history, biological existence was reflected in political existence. But what might be called a society's threshold of modernity has been reached when the life of the species is waged on its own political strategies. For millennia, man remained what, it, what he was for Aristotle, a living animal with the additional capacity for a political existence. Modern man is an animal whose politics places its, his, his existence as a living being in question. End of quote. As you know, Foucault viewed the combination of the disciplining of the individual body and the regulation of the population as the essential premise for establishing modern capitalism and constituting the national state. That combinatory process, he argued, allowed the creation of economically productive, military useful, and politically obedient body, a separation of the birth of biopolitics from the emergence of capitalism is thus impossible. Foucault also stressed that within this biopolitical constellation, modern racism is of central significance. It, it establishes an analytical grid distinguishing what must live from what must die. Good, higher, and ascending races from those deemed bad, inferior, and descending, thus allowing, thus allowing for hierarchization and fragmentation of the social. Foucault's concept of biopolitics is complex and has been assessed in highly varied ways. Very schematically, two central lines of reception can be distinguished. The first has its home in philosophy and social and political theory. It focuses on the meaning of politics. How does biopolitics inform a function and what counterforces does it mobilize? How does it separate itself historically and analytically from other political forms? The extreme poles of this debate represent its most prominent contributions. The writing of Giorgio Agamben on the one side, those of Michael Hart and Antonio Negri on the other. The second line of reception has its starting point in the sociology of science and technology, the history of science and medicine, and cultural anthropology together with feminist theory and gender studies. Its main interest is the matter of life. As a result of biotechnological developments, the living body is now understood as a readable and rewritable text. And then the question of biopolitics is posed in a different way. What is life within this new political technological constellation? In the following, I will trace revisions and refinements of the concept of biopolitics that have been formulated in these two lines of reception. In the second part of my presentation, I suggest tying the two research pers perspectives closer together. My main argument is that Foucault further pursues the question of biopolitics within the grid of governmentality. Initially, his analysis of biopolitical mechanisms in discipline and punish and the will to knowledge fell short, since it concentrated on disciplinary processes and ways of regulating the population thus being broad, broadly reduced to a kind of body politics. In contrast, the concept of government Foucault develops in his lecture of 1978 and 1979 at the Collège de France directs our attention to the relation between forms of self-direction and the government by others, allowing an investigation of moral political modes of existence. In total, the project outlined here is aimed at synthesizing two central concepts from Foucault's work, governmentality and biopolitics. Such an analysis would it make possible to formulate a series of questions that usually remain outside the pertinent academic and political discussions. It also allows an exploration of the systematic ties between liberal forms of government and biopolitical problems. So let me come to the first line of reception. <coughs> Giorgio Agamben has outlined one of the most important revisions of the concept of biopolitics. Agamben, in fact, 
presumes that all Western politics since antiquity should be characterized as biopolitics. In order to justify this thesis, he takes up ideas from Karl Schmidt, Walter Benjamin, Hannah Arendt, Martin Heidegger, and George Bataille, along with Foucault. According to Agamben, the main difference between the realm of the political is not that between friend and enemy, as Karl Schmidt thought, but that between naked life, Zoe, and political existence, bios, natural being and the human being's legal existence. With the constitution of sovereign power, thus only being made possible th through the production of a biological body, the application of law is inseparable from the suspension of bare life. Inclusion in the political community from the exclusion of human beings denied the status of legal subjects. In this manner, for Agamben, the present period is the catastrophic endpoint of a political tradition that originated in Greek antiquity and led to the death camps. In his work, Agamben declared the camps to be the, I quote, biopolitical paradigm of the West, end of quote. Since they were the locus of a disappearance of the border between the rule and the exception. However, his discussion of the camps is not primarily related to past horror, but to present sites marked by the state of exceptions, places where law and where law and fact rule and exception indistinguishably intermesh. Here not legal subjects, but bare life can be encountered. The state of exception is permanently in play. Alongside death camp inmates, the examples Agamben introduces are stateless people, refugees, and comatose patients. However, Agamben is less interested in life than its, in its nakedness. At the center of his reflection stands not drills and discipline, life normalization and endowment with norms, but rather the threat of death as the establishment and materializing of a border. For Agamben, biopolitics is thus above all thanatopolitics. In their work, Michael Hart and Antonio Negri arrive at an entirely different conclusion. They try to give the concept of biopolitics positive meaning, tying their arguments to the Italian movement for workers' autonomy, ideas from classical political and legal theory, post-structural critiques centered on identity and the subject and the Marxist tradition. Where Agamben criticizes Foucault for failing to see that modern biopolitics rests on the solid foundation of a pre-modern sovereign power, Hart and Negri criticize the French thinker for failing to recognize the transformation of modern into postmodern biopolitics. For Hart and Negri, biopolitics does not involve an intermeshing of rule and exception, but rather a dissolution of the boundaries between economics and politics reproduction and production, thus marking nothing less than a new stage of capitalism and a new political order they call empire. In their view, the creation of life is no longer something both limited to the realm of reproduction and subordinated to the labor process. To the contrary, life now determinates production itself. With biopolitics, they designate the constitution of a political regime that in the end embraces the totality of the individual's existence, <laughs> thus preparing the way for a new revolutionary subject, a creative and living entity, the multitude. Hence, the political order that Hart and Negri deline delineate possesses the material requirements for forms of associative cooperation potentially going beyond the structural constraints of capitalist production. A quote from, from their work, Empire, Empire creates a greater potential for revolution than did the modern regimes of power because it presents us alongside the machine of command with an alternative. The set of all the exploited and subjugated a multitude that is directly opposed to empire with no mediation between them, end of quote. For these two authors, biopolitics stands for an entire series of fractures and border displacements. It signifies the transition from modernity to postmodernity, imperialism to empire, and also marks a new relation between nature and culture. It signifies a civilization of nature, nature here meaning everything previously external to the production process. 
This, this diagnosis is the basis for the imminent perspective defining the analysis of Hader Negri. Once economics and politics, societal production and ideological legitimation have become more or less conflated, we no longer have an external standpoint of life or truth that can be set against empire. The Italian philosopher Roberto Esposito has developed his own concept of biopolitics at a critical distance from both Agamben's project and the analysis of Hart and Negri. Bios, biopolitics and philosophy, is the last part of a trilogy taking up and developing ideas from his two previous books. Esposito's main thesis is that modern West, Western political thinking is ruled by what he called the paradigm of immunization. Through a reconstruction of political theory since Hobbes, he argues that modern concepts of security, property, and freedom can only be understood within a logic of immunity, a logic characterized by an inner connection between life and politics in which immunity preserves and develops life by limiting its expensive and productive force. At the center of political action and thinking stands the safeguarding and protection of life, an objective, an objective that in the end produces self-destructive effects. To the degree that the logic of immunization protects and preserves, it negates the singularity of life processes, reducing them to biological existence. The immunitary dialectic leads, as Posito argues, from a point, from a project to preserve life to a negative form of protecting life and onwards to its ne negation. The paradigm of immunity allows an understanding of the opposing aspects and dimensions of biopolitics, promotion and developing uh, life on the one hand, its, its destruction on the other, as two constitutive moments of a shared perspective. As Posito views the Nazi racial program as the most radical expression of an immunitary rationality in which a life-centered politics becomes inverted into its negative, a politics of death. Like Foucault and Agamben, he insists that Nazism is part of a continuum of modern political thought. But unlike them, he locates its specific characteristics neither in a principle of sovereignty nor in the primacy of a state of exception. Rather, Esposito underscores the medical therapeutic aims of Nazism, the programmatic significance it ascribes to the struggle against illness, degeneration, and death. <coughs> now let me come to the second line of reception. This addresses recent research in the biosciences analyzing technological developments that allow to access what Sarah Franklin has once called life itself. It starts with the observation that as a result of biotechnological practices, the idea of a natural origin of all living beings is beginning to be replaced by the idea of an artificial plurality of living beings that are more techni technical artifacts than natural entities. Various technological innovations, such as, to name only a few, the redefinition of biological, of molecular biology of life as text, biomedical progress involving new techniques extending from brain scans to DNA analysis, and transplantation medicine and reproductive technologies have broken with the idea of an integral body. The body is increasingly viewed not as an organic substrate, but as a kind of a molecular software that can, as suggested, be both read and rewritten. Sarah Franklin and Margaret Locke describe this transformation of Zoe as follows. I quote, genealogical succession is to the new biology what a live orchestra is to digital recording, end of quote. Molecularization and digitalization mark a recombinant biopolitics, as Michael Dillon and Julian Reed called it. It opens up new levels of intervention within that body, at the same time allowing new combinations 
of heterogeneous elements into previously unknown life forms. The art of molecular engineering differs in a distinct way from traditional forms of biological and medical intervention in that it is aimed not only at modifying metabolic processes, but at reprogramming them as well. No longer control of outer nature, but transformation of inner nature stands at the center of that political epistemological epistemology of life. As a consequence, biology cannot be defined as discovery-based science registering and documenting life processes. Rather, it operates as a transformational science that creates life forms and alters living beings. This instrumentalization of life cannot be separated from its capitalization. Instead of functioning as a supplier of raw material for production, in the age of genetic diversity, nature can be understood as a source and creator of values. The reproduction and transformation of life processes can create what Catherine Waltby has called biovalue, which forms the basis of, for developing new products and services within the capitalist economy. Biological knowledge and life forms can be patented and marketed. In that way, a political economy of life emerges in which biological life value and capitalist exploitation establish an organic connection. When it comes to the Foucauldian concept of biopolitics, this reassessment of life suggests three lines of criticism. In the first place, it is clear that the Foucauldian concept largely adheres to the idea of an integral body. Foucault's analysis of techniques of power aimed at forming and dividing up the body itself postulates a self-contained and enclosable body. Today, biotechnologies allow a dismantling and recombination of the body that Foucault did not foresee. The body no longer appears as a self-evident starting point and organic substrate that technologies attach themselves so in order to form it, but is the effect of technologies of embodiment. The new level of intervention established by the above-mentioned techno-scientific advances is located beneath the classical biopolitical, biopolitical poles of individual and population. Anatomal politics and population regulation are comp complemented by a molecular po a politics, whose regard for individual persons is no longer anatomically and physiological, but genetic and simultaneously locates them within a gene pole. In the second place, this expanded grip on the body has led to a new relationship between life and death. Although in Birth of the Clinic, Foucault treats death as an integral part of modern medicine, in other texts he sees it as the outer border or the, or the other side of biopolitics. At present, living and dying are more closely and systematic, systematically interconnected than Foucault assessed. For one thing, human material transcends the living human body. Humans who die are often no longer really dead with portions of their body, their cells or organs, bloods, marrow and so forth continuing to exist in the bodies of others whose quality of life is thus improved or whose life is prolonged. Life material is not subject to the same biological rhythm as the organic body. It can be stored as information in DNA databases and biobanks or cultivated in potentially immortal stem cell lines. And the death of one person can guarantee the life and survival of another in the productive cycle. Furthermore, death has been broken up and rendered flexible. The definition of brain death and the emergence of reanimation techniques together with the subsequent splitting of death into various corporal regions and points in time, have allowed for a development and expansion of transplantation medicine. Not so much state sovereignty, but rather medical administrative authorities now make decisions about life and death. They define what human life is, when it begins and when it ends. In an entirely new way, thanatopolitics has been become part of biopolitics. And finally, 
Despite his diagnosis of the death of man, for Foucault, biopolitics remains oriented toward human individuals and populations, which results in two problems. On the one hand, this approach fails to illuminate the ways in which ecological management and environmental discourse insert themselves into the reproduction of the human species. It seems necessary to extend the concept of biopolitics to take in the administration and control of the circumstances of life in general. As Paul Rutherford has put it, I quote, Foucault did not adequately deal with the way in which the political and ecological problematization of populations can give rise in more recent times to a similar problematization of nature and environment, end of quote. That's the one problem. The other is that the reconfiguration of bodies as texts tends to also dissolve the epistemological and normative borderline between humans and non-humans. If life can be reduced to genetic structures, then the differences between humans and non-humans are gradual, not categorical. The human being aimed at by biomedical optimization strategies, less frequently ill and living longer, is at the same time an animal. Otherwise, the biological discourse about model organisms would make no sense, since it is mice mice and cats, apes and other animals, upon which human diseases are researched and pharmaceutical substances tried out. In this light, human being human no longer presents itself as a solid product of evolutionary processes, but rather as a precarious product of technology and the object of both social negotiation and patterns of cultural interpretation, biopolitics as an anthropopolitics. Let me summarize the, this, these two um, lines of, of reception. The brief overview points to the various lines of reception of Foucault's concept of biopolitics as having been deepened and further developed in important respects. A new biopolitical level is clearly present both beyond and beneath the levels of the individual and the population. It is grounded in an expanded knowledge of the body and biological processes. Within this altered representational regime, the body is less a physical substrate or an anatomical machine than an informational network. At the same time, in analyzing biopolitical mechanisms, a range of modes of subjectivation need to be considered in order to understand how social and political life affects individual and collective actors, resulting in new forms of identity. Over recent years, the Foucauldian notion of biopolitics has served as a starting point for a focus on the significance of knowledge production on the one hand and processes of subjectivation on the other. Important though such an expansion of the analytical horizon is, it is necessary to keep in mind that for the most part the two lines of reception have developed their problematizations independently and hardly touch on each other. This leads not only to a danger of mutual blindness, but also to the risk of reproducing and renewing an outdated division of labor. While one side is interested in the political sphere or the macro level, formul formulating questions of power and resistance, subjectivation and subjugation, the other side investigates technologies on a micro level, often in distance or even cut off political questions. Here the first line tends to analyze political processes without considering material technologies. The second one concentrates on technological developments while often isolating them from political strategies. In this light, I would like to propose the third perspective, focusing neither on processes of subjectivation nor on forms of knowledge, but rather resituating the biopolitical problematic within an analytics of government. Biopolitics is here meant to be understood as an art of government, to quote Foucault. An art of government that takes account of the relational network of power processes, practices of knowledge and forms of subjectivation. This, suggest <clears throat> this suggestion is tied to the project that Foucault formulated 
while summarizing his lecture of 1979 on the birth of biopolitics as follows. I quote, the theme was to have been biopolitics, by which I meant the attempt starting from the 18th century to rationalize the problems posed to governmental practice by phenomena characteristic of a set of living beings forming a population, health, hygiene, birth rate, life expectancy, race. End of quote. There is a widespread view that in the framework of his analytics of government, Foucault did not concern himself further with the theme of biopolitics. I believe this view is mistaken. The theme was not abandoned, but experienced a theoretical shift. Foucault places the question of biopolitics in a more general theoretical framework meant to allow a systematic linkage between processes of power, knowledge practices and forms of subjectivation comprising the relational network referred to above. Within this perspective, biopolitics has more to do with techniques of government and self-government, going beyond practices aimed at corporal disciplines, discipline and regulating the population. The birth of biopolitics is closely tied to the emergence of liberal forms of government, the birth of biopolitics being the title of his lecture of 1979. Foucault understands liberalism as a specific art of leading human beings which is oriented toward the population as a new political figure and disposing over the political economy as a technique of intervention. Liberalism introduces a rationality of government that differs from both medieval concepts of rule and early modern raison d'etat the idea of a nature of society forming both the basis and the boundaries of governmental action. The 18th century emergence of political economy and of the population as a new political figure cannot be separated from the beginnings of modern biology. Liberal concepts of autonomy and freedom are closely connected to biological concepts of self-preservation and self-regulation that come to prevail over the previously dominant physical mechanistic model for investigating the body. Originating around 1800, biology was based on an organ organizational principle, understanding the visible phenomena of life as emerging essentially at random, without a set plan. Internal organization thus replaced an external order corresponding to the plans of a higher authority beyond life with life functioning as an abstract and dynamic principle inherent in all organisms. Categories such as self-preservation, reproduction and development now came to characterize living bodies placed at a greater distance from artificial creations that, had, that has been the case before. When in the lectures on, of 1978 and 1979, Foucault defines, I quote, liberalism, liberalism as the general framework of biopolitics, end of quote, this signals a shift of accent from his previous work, resulting not least from critical self-insight. To the effect that his previous analysis of forms of biopolitical power were one-sided and unsatisfactory since they focused mainly on processes involving population regulation and corporal disciplining. Foucault's analytics of government forms a contrast to these, expanding corporal policies with the perspective of a vital politics. This concept stems from <clears throat> Alexander Ristow, one of the most important representatives of post-war German liberalism, whom Foucault briefly touches on in his 1979 lecture. By vital politics, Rüstow means a form of politics, I quote, that considers all factors upon which happiness, well-being and satisfaction in reality depend, end of quote. This politics, he indicates, <clears throat> by no means, is by no means limited to the action of the state, but, I quote again, Rüstow, is politics in the broadest possible sense, all social measures and experimental arrangements, end of quote. It relies on social ties and spiritual cohesion and reactivates moral values and cultural traditions. Vital politics denotes a task of integration and innovation needing to take into account, needing to take 
in all societal elements and levels while simultaneously acknowledging their self-directing competences. Foucault's analytic of government takes account of this biopolitic of these vital political ambitions of neoliberal governmental practice, tying the analysis of physical, biological being to an examination of subjectivation processes and moral, political modes of existence. Following a suggestion by Lars Torop Larsen, not only two subject forms of biopolitics, individual and population, can be distinguished, but also taking up Agamben's own distinction, two forms of life, Zoe and Bios. This analytic distinction makes it possible to scrutinize the ways the two bio biopolitical dimensions are intertwined. In Discipline and Punish and the Will to Knowledge, Foucault's concept of biopolitics remains centered on individual disciplining and the regulation of the population. The analysis of subjectivation processes essentially limits itself to subjugation and corporal dressage, hence to the dimension of Zoe, with techniques of self-constitution receiving little notice. With the problematic of government, the perspective broadens, with the question of moral and political existence now also emerging, the problem then of bios. Analysis of disciplinary and regulatory processes is now supplemented with analysis of another form of power, a form that, I quote Foucault, categorizes the individual, makes him by his own individual individuality, attaches him to his identity, imposes a law of truth on him that he must recognize and others have to recognize in him, end of quote. Beyond technology of bodily disciplining and the regulation of the population, attention is now also focused on the self-constitution of individual and collective subjects. Accordingly, Foucault now distinguishes between political technologies of individuals and technologies of the self. The first one, political technologies of individuals, leads us, I quote Foucault, to recognize ourselves as a society, as part of a social entity, as part of a nation or a state, end of quote. Such technologies can be designed, designated more generally and perhaps more precisely as technologies of the social, a phrase he, here not meant to suggest that, that technologies have social applications, but rather referring to practices that generate society as an imaginary totality and fictive collective body in the first place. In distinctions to technologies of the social, technologies of the self allow individuals to, again a quote from Foucault, to effect by their own means a certain number of operations on their bodies, on their souls, on their thoughts, on their conduct, and, in this, and this in a manner so as to transform themselves, modify themselves, and to attain a certain state of perfection, happiness, purity, supernatural power, end of quote. In this manner, four interconnected biopolitical dimensions can be analytically differentiated, and they are presented on, on the slide. Let me, come, let me now come to the, to the last part of my lecture. The linkage of these four dimensions allows us to treat the problem of biopolitics in a more complex theoretical framework. For Foucault, modern biopolitics is a historical form of articulation of a much more general problem, the linkage between pastoral and political power extending back into Christian antiquity. With the advent of liberal government, this problem took on a specific form. For one particular question first surfaces with liberalism, how are free subjects, subjects of law, governed when they are simultaneously understood as living beings. Foucault focuses on this problem when he insists that the issue of biopolitics cannot be separated, and again a longer quote, from the framework of political rationality within which they appeared and took their intensity. This means liberalism, since it was in relation to liberalism that they assumed the form of a challenge. How can the phenomena of population 
with its specific effects and problems be taken into account in a system concerned about respect for legal subjects and individual free enterprise? In the name of what and according to what rules can it be managed? End of quote. Liberal government, Foucault observes, developed a specific political knowledge and new disciplines like statistics, demography, and epidemiology, analyzing life processes at the level of population groups in order to govern individuals through correcting, excluding, normalizing, disciplining, therapeutically treating, and optimizing measures. Foucault emphasizes that in the framework of the government of living beings, Nature represents no autonomous realm in principle free of intervention, but itself depends on governmental action. No material substrate upon which governmental practices might be applied, but rather their constant correlative. The peculiar subject-object status of the political figure of the population plays an important role here. On the one hand, that figure stands for a collective reality, essentially independent of political intervention and distinguished, as outlined above, by its own dynamic and self-directing competency. On the other hand, this autonomy does not represent any absolute boundary for political intervention, but rather its privileged reference. The discovery of a population's nature for instance through birth birth rates, death rates, and rates of disease, is the precondition for the possibility of its deliberate direction. But with liberal governmentality, not only biological life emerges as the object and reference of government, but also political life. Liberalism is tied to the constitution of a bourgeois society and the public sphere that reflects about governmental practices, inquires into their pros and cons, and criticizes their possible excesses. For this reason, Foucault understands liberalism not only as a political theory or an economic doctrine, but rather as, and again a lengthy quote, form of critical reflection on governmental practice. The question of liberalism, understood as a question of too much government, has been one of the constant dimensions of that recent European phenomena which seem to have emerged, first of all in England, namely political life. It is even one of its constitu constituent elements if it is true that political life exists when the possible excess of governmental practice is limited by the fact that it is the object of public debate regarding its good or bad. It's too much or too little, end of quote. The reformulation of the concept of biopolitics within an analytics of government has a number of theoretical advantages. Such a perspective allows us, in the first place, to break with bio biologistic concepts and confront the still enduring t tendency in the social sciences and the humanities to treat bodies, biology, and nature as pre-social objects. Human bodies or the nature of the population are not external or ontological premises for political government. On, to the contrary, the art of government represents what Foucault called the sudden emergence of the naturalness of the human species within the political artifice of a power relation. This analytical perspective that also allows to go beyond the anthropocentric and sociocentric limitations of Foucault concepts to take into account the material turn in social theory that calls for a reconsideration of nature. The new movement no longer relies upon definitions of matter as passive, inactive, and unitary. Instead, it understands matter as active, forceful, and plural. It also dissociates the concept of agency and power from human intentionality or subjectivity. By extending the idea of agency and power to non-human nature, this theoretical perspective calls into question the traditional concept of life. As the political theorist Jane Bennett claims in putting, toward, in putting forward the concept of vibrant matter, I quote, everything is in a sense alive, end of quote. 
And again, a quote from, from uh, Bennett, by vitality, I mean the capacity of things, edibles, commodities, storms, metals, not only to impede or block the will and designs of humans, but also to act as quasi-agents quasi or forces with trajectories, propensities, and tendencies of their own, end of quote. The idea of a living matter irritates and undermines conventional distinctions between matter and life, inorganic and organic, passive object and active subject. Foucault mostly understood government as the guidance of human conduct. So Karen Barrett is right in criticizing Foucault's concept of biopower for not providing dynamic concept, a dynamic concept of materiality that takes into account of the materialization of human as well as non-human bodies. However, a more fruitful reading is also possible, I think. In the 1978 lecture series at the Collège de France, Foucault refers to a definition of government provided by Guillaume de, de la Perrière in an early modern tract on the art of government. Here, government is conceived of as, I quote, the right disposition of things. It is concerned with the complex of man and things, I quote again, men in their relationships, bonds, and complex involvement with things like wealth, resources, means of subsistence, the territory with its borders, <clears throat> qualities, climate, dryness, fertility, and so on, end of quote. In this perspective, government not only focuses on governing humans and relations between humans, it also refers to a more comprehensive reality that includes the material environment and the specific arrangements and technical networks between human and non-human actors. While Foucault never systematically addressed the question of how things affect humans, the conceptual shift to a government of things not only makes it possible to extend the territory of government and multiplies the elements and the relations it consists of, it also initiates a reflexive perspective that takes into account the diverse ways in which the boundaries between the human and the non-human world are negotiated, enacted, and stabilized. Furthermore, this theoretical stance makes it possible to analyze the sharp distinction between the natural on the one hand and the social on the other, matter and meaning, as distinctive instrument and effect of governmental rationalities and technologies. Foucault's writing did not so much systematically pursue as offer promising suggestions for this analytical perspective. He never concretized his remarks on the relation between biopolitics and liberalism, something meant to stand at the center of his 1979 lectures. Regrettably, what we have is the intention, as Foucault himself conceded self-critically in the course of the lecture filling out this program, developing it, and making it useful for contemporary theoretical debates and political struggle is the challenge facing current research on the concept of biopolitics. Thank you very much. Well, for me, it's mostly related to what I call the second line of reception with, um, um, with feminist scholars like Sarah Franklin or Donna Harry, for example, Rosie Badotti, but also fit in this, uh, in this line of reception, where the question how the concern, for example, or one, one area of research would to link uh, the interest in, 
in analyzing reproductive technologies and their impact on, on gender relations, for example. Or you have, I mean, I'm not sure um, how concrete I have to be. What exactly um, the X stands for, or how the um, how um, uh, how a gendered a, a gendered perspective on on reproductive technologies, for example, takes place, and how this is related to the notion of biopolitics itself. So there, there you would have the. I think it's more explicit in this area than I would, than I would, uh, than uh, what I call the, the first uh, line of reception. You know, so concern with uh, tech technologies and especially uh, reproductive technologies, stem cell research, and how um, how the engagement with the technologies, how they are enacted, is connected to. Uh, a certain uh, gender division of labor, certain concepts of uh, maleness and uh, 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 and so I would see this this as the as the uh, as a central line of reception right, where then where gender comes in. Uh, well, this was more empirical review, you know. <laughs> I wouldn't say that the, the first in the first, but it doesn't play a role, you know. But if I just have, a, uh, if I just would analyze uh, what is, has been published and how the, uh, is the notion of biopolitics used in certain disciplines and in certain uh, thematic uh, topics, I would say it's more prominent in the, in the second line of reception. I'm not sure if it's if it's one single text, you know, the honest and single Latin text in Foucault, that would help to. Um, I mean, it's it's a very let's it's a very artificial thing I try to do. I just grabbed certain concept, for example, the, this idea of a political technology of individuals. You know, uh, this is not developed, for example, in this honest and single Latin. It's in a different text, but I thought. Or the idea is to stick as far as possible with Foucault and certain concepts he developed at different places and in, in a different time uh, uh, in his work, and uh, to use this uh, to uh, to make something that he didn't explicitly do. You know, the, the linking uh, of biopolitics and governmentality and how uh, his let's say earlier interest in the in the administration uh, of the population, the regulation of the population on the one hand, and his focus on discipline <laughs> on the other hand, can be um, theoretically combined with his interest in what he then called political technologies of the individual and self-technologies. And uh, so I try to 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 give um, yes to. To, to put something, to, to have this analytical grip, as I, as I call it, to put it together, certain a dimension that you won't find uh, really worked out in Foucault's own work. So it's, this is an essential text, but I would say there are others where I took just the material and certain ideas. And, uh, but as I said, it's still, um, we still have, of course, we still have to go beyond Foucault. But there are some ideas in Foucault, like this idea of the government of things. You know, I think, in the light of what I call this um, this perspective of the new materialism, there, there is something in Foucault that he just he just uh, glossed over it. You know, 
but he didn't develop it uh, uh, systematically. But it would be possible, I think, to use the concept of, of a government and to to go beyond the conduct of human conduct, you know, which is uh, how it is uh, interpreted and used mostly uh, so far. creating sort of new ontologies and very enthusiastic about affirmation and networks and so on. And then a more sort of um, maybe more traditional Foucauldian biopolitics uh, sort of group that were more skeptical about this um, sort of creation of new ontology mm. because they felt that it um, sort of detracts from the critical project mm -hmm. and sort of, well, the question remains of where is the politics and where is the possibility for and I was wondering what, since you, you're kind of bringing this into your work, what is, what is your take on this tension between the two approaches? Um, well, I, I haven't been at the conference, but just from what you were saying, I'd rather stick with the second side. <laughs> with the, uh, I'm quite hesitant, concerned that um, this affirmative part of a new anthology, um, I think... In, in it has to be taken into account. Well, this would be, a, let's say, a low-level strategy. First of all, I think that there's a lot of critical potential in the new materialism that without buying the new ontology is very useful. You know, maybe at a certain point, I, I'm not ready yet, you know, maybe I am in, in the future, but at that point I would say, okay, I recognize that there's a lot of critical and political potential in this movement, and it points to a lot of shortcomings uh, in other debates, and in that 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 kind of, it is useful, but this doesn't necessarily mean that I have to buy the new ontology and the affirmative part as well. So I'm a bit hesitant concerning that, but maybe <laughs> at a later point, if you would ask me in a year or two, maybe I'm I'm more open to, to that. I'm not sure if I, if I understood uh, the question correctly, but I think, well, in, in, in Foucault's work, he's mostly, he's, his critique is mostly direct to what he called the human sciences. And this, in a way, excludes exclude the, 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 natural, the natural sciences. There are certain scholars that try to argue, and I think convincingly argue, that Foucault's, um, that Foucault's critique could also be applied to the natural science and the authority. And well, in contrast to the speaker this morning, I think there's a lot of authority, uh, especially for the natural science and especially for molecular genetics. So uh, I can't, I didn't really understand where, where the lack of authority is. But anyway, I think that um, someone like, like Joseph Roos who tried to, to uh, analyze uh, the power effects and the authority of the natural sciences uh, this would be in line of uh, Foucault's uh, critique of the of the of the human sciences, 
and um, I think what what concerns yes of course there's a lot of uh, of danger from environmental problems but I think uh, what Foucault um, what Foucault has to offer in terms of the, this approach of governmentality even if he himself didn't explicitly deal with this, there are other scholars uh, who use it to analyze what you refer to, the, to to environmental problems or the environmental question. So I wouldn't see that um, why it, it's not possible to deal with with these problem in um, um, along the lines that I that I try to 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 lay out you know, this this grid of gov of governmentality or this. Um, of linking of the let's say the original problematics of biopolitics in Foucault with a more general concern of, of governmentality or the integrating of the biopolitical problematic into a, a larger concept of, of government, government of, of life of life forms uh, uh, of which of, or the, the the four dimensions that I try to um, to differentiate. <coughs> Schedule and uh, we'll start the over schedule. Um, please join me in.